If you want to learn how to sew a hole for something like this, like so, but you don't have a press foot like this, nor do you have the buttonhole setting like this, then you should probably watch this video. Sewing a buttonhole these days is super easy because a lot of machines come with a buttonhole presser foot or they come with a buttonhole setting. So you just fix the placement, pedal to the metal, and boom. You can produce these consistent, easy buttonholes automatically. However, if you're ever dealing with a sewing machine that doesn't have that buttonhole setting, or you misplace this or break the presser foot, or maybe you're even dealing with a button that's too big for that presser foot. That's where this video comes clutch. I'm going to show you exactly how you can sew buttonholes manually. Start with your fabric. If this is your garment, it would probably be right sides out. And then with Taylor's chalk, draw a center line for your buttonhole as the guide. For the width of your buttonhole, you typically want one that's just slightly larger than your actual button. That way it's a snug hold. So this one is three quarters of an inch. So I'll add one eighth and make my buttonhole seven eighths of an inch. Then with your ruler, mark the start and end line based on the buttonhole width. You don't have to do lines this long. I just extended my start and end line so that it's easier for you to see in the video. Now we have a guide. We know where we're gonna lay down some stitches. Let's pull out our sewing machine and get that set up. The sewing tension is going to depend on the fabric you're using, but I'm going to have a tension of four. The needle position is going to be in the middle. Stitch option is going to be the zigzag style. And then the length is going to be 0.1. So basically run it to zero and then just pull it over a touch. For the width, I'll be switching between a wide setting of five and a narrow setting of two. These are just the widths that I wanted to use after testing a few stitches out on some scrap material. So I'd highly recommend testing out your own stitches, find a width you like, and same goes for the length. All right, let me show you how to sew a buttonhole without the buttonhole setting the old school way. Line up your fabric so that the needle will fall on the start line. And when you lower your press foot, you're gonna start with five stitches at your widest setting. For me, that's a five. For you, it might be a six, might be a five. End with the needle in on the right side. Use the hand wheel and only turn towards you, never away from you. And I always like to change the width when the needle's in the up position, otherwise I'm shifting it while it's in the fabric. But right now I'm gonna shift the needle width setting to two, so it's at the narrow setting. Turn the hand wheel again only towards you and pause with the needle hovering just above the fabric. We're gonna slightly lift the presser foot with our left hand to shift the fabric so that the needle will fall just to the left edge of those first few wide stitches. Your left hand lifts the press foot only slightly so that you could drop the press foot in an instant. And then your right hand just gently shifts the fabric, slight movements to line up the needle. Once you're ready, your sewing machine will be at its narrow setting. So stitch forward until you reach the end line. You're gonna end these stitches with the needle in the down position on the left side. With the needle down, lift the press foot and spin the fabric 180 degrees and then put the press foot back down. Use the hand wheel to lift the needle up out of the fabric. And then once it's up, we're gonna switch back to our wide width setting. For me, that's a five. We're gonna use the hand wheel again and just stop just short of the fabric so that you're hovering over top of it. With your left hand, slightly lift the press foot and then use your right hand to shift the fabric so that the needle will fall right in the same spot as before in the previous stitch. Now complete three stitches and end with the needle in the right side in the down position. Feel free to use a hand wheel, turn it towards yourself if you want a little bit more control on the needle. We're gonna finish off strong here. We're gonna use our hand wheel, raise the needle up. When the needle's above the fabric, we're gonna switch to the narrow width of two. And then we're gonna continue using the hand wheel just before piercing the fabric, so it's just hovering again. We're gonna lift the presser foot, shift the fabric so that the needle will line up to the left side of the left end of the previous stitch. Once you're ready, you're going to stitch until you return to the beginning line. You're going to back stitch a few times to lock in the stitch and then you're done. Make sure you got buttonholes on lock because there's a cargo pants tutorial in the works. It's dropping soon, so stay tuned. And until next time, peace.